Today on Let's Talk Bitcoin, we're joined by one of my favorite guests and entrepreneurs in the space. Alan Reiner is the founder and CEO of Armory Technologies, and he joins us once again on the show. Alan, thank you for joining us. Hey, Adam. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Backing up a second, Armory is pretty much my wallet of choice, and I am not bashful about that at all. It has a lot of really interesting features, and you've been developing it as an open source project for the last two years. You've, you've made a lot of progress in that amount of time, and it's become a fairly popular wallet. You just went through a round of funding that saw you upgrade your company, which used to be an LLC, to a full-size you know, corporation. Can you tell us how your journey kind of went about from being a hobbyist open source project to, to something that's fully funded? Actually, for the first year and a half, I, I wasn't anything in terms of companies. Uh, I was just a random hobbyist. I still had a full-time job working, doing missile defense contracts at a, at a contractor in the D.C. area. And I was working on Armory in my spare time. Now, as Bitcoin started to get bigger and Armory started to get bigger and Armory's features were in higher demand and people had more money from the growing value of Bitcoin, they felt more pressure to protect that. And Armory has slowly become a, a trusted choice for those people who, who are the most paranoid about security. Basically, as a part-time hobby, it, it kind of got bigger than I could handle as a part-timer. I got a, a first level of funding, a, a very small amount of, of funding to help convince my fiance to let me quit my job. Within a few months, we had Trace Mayer come along and, and wanted to give us more funding and, and more serious funding, not just to let me quit my job, but to hire other people. To, to do so uh, because he believes, you know, everyone involved here believes that, that Armory is going to play uh, a big role in helping people secure their money and that there just aren't a lot of other tools that do this. Let's talk about those tools. You know, there hasn't been a lot of development in the wallet space, kind of surprising to a lot of people. I sort of attribute this to the fact that when you have something that works, even if it's not super usable, the fact that it works and that it's freely available in the Satoshi client has sort of made it so, you know, it's hard to monetize the wallet space unless you're doing something super revolutionary. This is clearly a problem that you've run into. That's been a topic of discussion. There's even been top on the Bitcoin forum foundations. People have noted that wallets are, are difficult to monetize and it, it's, you know, we're definitely breaking new ground here and Trace and myself are definitely taking a gamble in terms of whether we think we can turn an open source project into something that makes money. And luckily, Trace and the other investors and you know everyone closely related to us, we, we all like Bitcoin. So at the very least, we hope that we will be able to develop tools that help grow Bitcoin, even if uh, the company doesn't find all those monetization avenues. But of course, we, we're pretty uh, optimistic about that too. So is there an expectation that you'll be monetizing this project from the investors? Eventually. Do you have any light to shed on that question and on how you would go about monetizing something like this, or is it still definitely in the pot? We have probably dozens of different ways that we can see bring in money. It's difficult to know which one of those are going to bear the most fruit and how much effort it's going to be to explore those paths. At the moment, we're in the mode that we want to get the tools built to keep this thing open source, help grow Bitcoin. And the investors are basically saying they're in no rush to make a return on this. And we are absolutely planning to explore those avenues, but we really want to have a good product before we start trying to monetize it. We're a little concerned that if we were to divert resources to building the revenue channels that uh, we'd be hurting ourselves because the product is still not as mature as we'd like it to be. It, it works very well functionally, but its usability is kind of lacking right now. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, Armory, on the one hand, has all of these really interesting, and I think a lot of them are actually unique as far as Bitcoin wallets are concerned features. But on the other hand, it does use a lot of system resources and requires you to run Bitcoin D in the background. So I mean, mm -hmm. from a technology standpoint, what are the things that you're working on towards improvements of what you have right now? Well, I'll tell you that my core goal Armory has been security at all costs. And a lot of people see that because they find that you have to really want to use Armory to use it. I mean, there's there's a lot of issues like with RAM resources, people have actually gone and upgraded their computers just to be able to run Armory. We're actually nearing very close to, to solving a whole bunch of those issues all at once. That isn't resolved yet. So at this moment, if you're getting excited about Armory and you have less than eight gigs of RAM, you might have some difficulty running running the current version. That's because that usability aspect hasn't been our priority. Right now, we're trying to fill the niche, something that maximizes security and whatever it takes. And part of that is, is when we talk about running Bitcoin QT in the background, it's because that is the safest way, the most secure way to communicate with the Bitcoin network. It could take me months and months and months to re-implement that and it wouldn't be as good and it would have security flaws. As much as people don't like running Bitcoin QT in the background, 
if you're really using the app because you want the security and the privacy, that's what you need to do. So, Alan, for someone who's never used Armory before or really just has been exposed to the Satoshi client, which is that default client that everybody downloads the first time, can you explain what some of kind of the base features that differentiate Armory from other wallets that are out there? I think the most important feature of Armory is the is the backups. It, it's kind of difficult to describe, you know, what's really going on under the hood. The Satoshi client, Bitcoin QT, whatever you want to call it, I wish they'd come up with a better name for that randomly generates addresses they generate a pool of them and when you run out of that pool it makes more but it's, it's not uh, deterministic which means that if you were to restore your wallet to a previous version and regenerate those addresses you'd get different addresses that's a serious problem in terms of backups one of the things that i think is most important for people's security both security from other people and security from themselves is being able to do backups and people are really bad at persistent backups so Armory implements a one-time backup system that's as secure as the, the method that Bitcoin QT uses. And in fact, Bitcoin QT and all the other clients are moving to a similar scheme. Armory has had that for two years where you make your wallet the first time and then you can print off a sheet of paper or if you don't have a printer, you can write down the data on the sheet of paper. And that's all you need ever. You can use millions and billions of addresses, send and receive money as much as you want. No matter what happens, that piece of paper will always always recover your money. Why are and you able to do this where the Satoshi client is not? It's not a matter of capability, it's a matter of uh, priorities. It will be a pretty dramatic change for the Satoshi client to implement that because it, it involves overhauling their wallet code, which is very, very sensitive code. Mm -hmm. There's something called BIP32, Bitcoin Improvement Proposal. BIP32 actually specifies a similar scheme and all the wallet developers have committed to, to implementing that. It's just that I wrote Armory with that from the start, not BIP32, but related. So I wrote Armory from the start with this scheme in place. I didn't have to modify anything to implement it. In one way, that was one of my motivations for starting Armory was that you dig through the forums and you see people either losing money because of stale backups or overwrote backups or something. There's just so many ways for that to go wrong. And if you're protecting a lot of money, you, you really just want simple and easy. And it's very easy to just print off a backup once with Armory and then forget about it. Go put it in a safe deposit box and never think about it again. So one of the other things that Armory has innovated recently, or, or it's coming out very soon, is this idea of fragmented backups. And I, I think you're the first implementation of them, right? Yes, I believe so. Is that the right term for it? I'm calling them fragmented backups. <laughs> I don't know if there's an official term. That's a term that I've used in Armory. The real term for it is Shamir secret sharing. It, mm -hmm. It's called secret splitting, where you can split a piece of data, which in this case is your backup. You would normally print a single sheet of paper and that sheet of paper protects your wallet. You can use that sheet of paper to recover all of your funds anytime in the future. But people who have concerns about physical security don't like the idea that there's a single point of failure, that someone who gets this piece of paper can instantly take all of your money. There's a common cryptography technique called Shamir secret sharing, and I've labeled it fragmented backups so that this one sheet of paper you would normally print instead might be uh, three sheets of paper and any two of them is sufficient for recovering your wallet. And that really, really, it increases the physical security dramatically. Maybe you keep one at home, put one in a safe deposit box, give one to your parents uh, to hold on to you or bury it in your backyard or, you know, whatever. That gives you the capability that if someone goes digging in your backyard or they uh, snooping in safe deposit boxes, they still can't get the coins. How does this compare in terms of security to something like a digital backup on either another hard drive or another computer? I mean, do you think that it's just flat out better to have physical copies of backups regardless of whether it's fragmented or just a single piece? A absolutely. Digital copies are not going to be nearly as reliable as a physical piece of paper, and not to mention that digital copies are digital, which means that they're stored in places that a lot of people want to encrypt it and put it online or store it in Dropbox or, or some other place. A lot of issues because, you know, you put it to a USB key, but you don't know whether in two years that USB key is going to work. So you make a couple different copies and you spread them around. It's rather suboptimal to do it that way. We believe that being able to have a physical piece of paper that can't be accessed from anyone on the internet that you can just tuck away in a safe deposit box or, you know, on your bookshelf is really the best way to secure yourself.
One of the other things that Armory does that uh, is sort of different from a lot of the other wallets out there is it gives you the ability to maintain multiple wallets and have a lot of control over what each one does. You have individual coin control so that you can. So when you're making a transaction, you can actually pick which inputs if you want to get this deeply into it, which sometimes I do, that gets sent out so that you can control your, your privacy leaks and things like that. Do you think that most users or that, you know, that a normal user is going to use multiple wallets moving forward? Because, I mean, I use eight, but, uh, but I think I'm pretty <laughs> abnormal as far as most people are concerned. <laughs> I think the capability to, to use multiple wallets is fairly powerful. It gives a much clearer separation of funds, especially if you're talking about the other feature of Armory, which is the, the holy grail feature of being able to keep some money offline on offline wallets for extra security. You have to balance your convenience and your security. You know, you want to keep the majority of your funds in a super secure wallet, which might be an offline wallet. But when you're just online and you want to buy something small, you don't want to have to go through that inconvenience of, of accessing the offline computer. So being able to, to keep multiple different wallets for different purposes is good. We'd like to eventually integrate a mobile app and then you'd be able to track the mobile wallet from your computer and refill it or sweep the money out of it if you lose your phone or something like that. That's a future benefit of having this kind of multi-wallet interface already designed. You can use it not only for your own wallets, you can use it for watching other people's wallets, like your phone wallet or a multi-sig addresses. They're not developed yet, but to be able to create addresses that require multiple signatures, you need to be able to see other people's wallets. They will give you those for that purpose. I, I don't know if, do any of the other clients have multiple wallets? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I mean, I think that you you can do it, but it has more to do with like swapping your wallet.dat file and creating an actual new wallet and then just I swapping see. the files back and forth. I've done that in the past. The creating watching only copies of the wallets is really interesting. I just set that up for uh, our CFO to watch all of the accounts that he needs to be watching. It was a very easy process. Did I miss any of the relevant features that we should go over now before talking about future development? I mean, I, I think it's worth uh, emphasizing the offline wallets feature just because it is something that is mostly unique to Armory, and it's one of the reasons why people use Armory. I mean, okay, it's so let's the core reason people use it. So I've never used it for that, to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, I've really? used the backups before, but I haven't done the the signing on another computer. Can can right. we talk about okay, so 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 the idea is to get your private keys off of a computer that has access to the internet, because if the computer has access to the internet, then that means the internet has access to it, which means that you might be vulnerable to viruses or a hacker or something like that. So how exactly would I make a transaction with an offline balance in this way? Uh, I'm going to skip over the details of setting up the wallet for a second, just so you can appreciate the process. Once it's set up, people say, well, if it's offline, how do you send money? And the way it works is that the wallet shows up in your online computer. It, it looks identical besides having a different color and it'll be labeled offline. You'll be able to see all of your balances on the online computer. You'll be able to give out payment addresses so people can pay you. It really behaves exactly like any other wallet in terms of verifying payments and, and all that. The difference is, is that when you actually go to send money, just like you would with a regular hot wallet, you, you'll still be able to fill out all the recipients and everything, but there will be no send button because the data that you need to send the transaction is not on that computer. And this is the power of it is that you can still do everything you would do uh, with a regular wallet, but you can't send the money, which means that uh, someone who accesses your computer can't, can't, can't send the money either. Instead of sending the money, the button will save the data to a USB key. And you just take that USB key to the offline computer, you hit sign, you bring it back and you hit broadcast. And that's how the, the transaction is completed. If you have the computers right next to each other, this computer that's never touched the internet that has the wallet on it, you can do it in like literally 60, 60 to 90 seconds. It's very quick. Rather than hitting send, it's just going to save it to the USB key, pop it out, put it in the other computer, sign it, bring it back, hit broadcast. Once you do it probably two or three times, it becomes a breeze. That does sound easy, actually. I assumed it was a much more difficult process, but yeah, that sounds really simple. Are there any weaknesses to that approach besides the fact that you actually have to do steps that involve something outside of your computer? This is definitely, you know, it's two orders of magnitude better than anything else out there. So the founder of Armory Wallet says that based on current available technology, secure way to store your Bitcoins and still have them available to transact in a relatively hassle-free way. Absolutely. There, there just really isn't anything better. This can be improved incrementally by improving your processes for setting up the offline computer. Also, 
USB keys are not the best thing in the world for accessing secure systems. I would much prefer people use USB keys for online, offline computers and have them just keep it online because it's too inconvenient otherwise. Although USB keys, the mechanism for moving data back and forth between the computers is not ideal. It's still far better than saying, oh, this is too complicated. I'm going to just keep it online because it's easier. We're actually working on developing some other mechanisms for the people who desire even more security for moving that data back and forth without the caveats of, of USB keys. What do you think of the hardware devices we've started to see appear? The first one would be the Trezor, which I believe either just came out or is just about to come out. Is this a good replacement? Is this a different technique or is it just an improvement to the technique? Because instead of having a separate full-blown computer, you just have a dedicated device. I would say that they're a 70% solution. I believe they're an advancement for Bitcoin technology. They will be very easy with a Trezor, or uh, I know at one point Butterfly Labs was creating something called BitSafe, but I haven't heard of it in a while. With those devices, you get most of the benefits of an offline computer. And if the application is set up right, for instance, Armory will be supporting Trezor, it should be very simple. However, it doesn't quite have the same confidence level as setting up your own system. Uh, in this case, you would be using Armory and you would be using this hardware device. There's a lot of concern concerns that the device may not actually be secure or may not have the same uh, firmware or software that the developers have said it does, whether maliciously or accidentally. I, I don't want to discredit them at all. It's just, you know, from a pure security perspective, you want as cool as possible in the process of, of moving your money. And the more pieces you bring into the process, the more places you've opened up security vulnerabilities. Right. The more places you have the potential for something to go wrong. So right. even if they have good intentions, it's still because it's a standardized piece of hardware that's specifically intended for this purpose could be compromised either internally or externally. Don't get me wrong. I still believe that it's going to be dramatically better than keeping the money on an online computer. There's just so many ways for that to go wrong. And I think it's fine for a little bit of cash. Um, and it's convenient and all that. I think the hardware wallets are going to fill demand that's something that's in high demand, which is a nice compromise between getting the full offline computer and keeping everything online. The nice thing about the offline computer is you get a whole lot of extra flexibility. You can do a lot more management. You have a lot more control over uh, the wallets um, with the recent vulnerabilities and random number generators. You know, we'll, we'll be adding something to, to help you something like dice or card shuffling to, to reduce your reliance on the random number generator in the computer, which has been found to be not as secure as people had hoped. You took the recent, you know, revelations about the uh, random numbers, maybe not being so random as a reason to, to start work towards implementing solutions that don't even use a random number generator. Yep. Huh. Exactly. <laughs> That's very cool. That's great, Alan. And, and part of that comes from our users. As soon as something comes out, news that says, Bitcoins were compromised in this other app. The first thing is that happens is I get 20 emails saying, oh my God, is this a problem with Armory? Wait, are, are you secure? Do you, did you know about this? Some people are holding a lot of money yeah, and they want to make sure they're covered. So uh, I've had this idea for a while, actually. And then all the NSA revelations and security vulnerabilities have really uh, pushed it up on the priority list for us. What has it been like going from having this be an open source project that you're working on in your spare time by yourself to something where eventually you're able to make it your full time job and then now are bringing on additional people? I mean, how has that been? Is this where you expected to find yourself a couple of years down the road when you started this? Well, certainly not when I started this. I didn't expect to end up here. You know, in fact, when I started this, I wasn't even planning to release end user software. I was just creating tools for analyzing the blockchain analyzing the network and playing with various concepts that I was learning. And it slowly evolved into, into what it is now. I anticipate it would just be a, a long-term, you know, open source project. There's a lot of them out there that are developed by just a couple people that persist and people are happy with them. Not major projects, but, you know, little projects. And I had anticipated this would be a little project, but I didn't see Bitcoin getting as big as it is getting. And it definitely deserves full-time attention from me now. I will admit that things have been very slow. I've definitely been much more distracted than I expected to be. There is so much legal process and just so many steps involved with, with going through the incorporation, especially when you're doing like an actual corporation rather than just an LLC and you're setting up different share classes and such. There's a whole bunch of agreements and legal stuff. Also, 
doing recruiting, getting your book set up, stuff like that has been just a lot more overwhelming than, than I expected. So I know a lot of users are disappointed that uh, I haven't been able to get out the latest release, which solves a lot of the resource issues. But I promise you guys, it's coming soon. Uh, a lot of those things are out of the way now. So we, you know, I can focus on that development. And we got a couple new guys who are helping out, although they're still kind of in the learning phase. They are accelerating what's happening on the development side. So what are you working towards right now with the team as it is? I mean, what are the, what are the priorities that you're focused on at this point? The current version of Armory 0.88.1, it's been there. It's been on the website for the past six months. That version will take about six gigs of RAM, which is enormous. And it'll scan the blockchain on every load, which can take anywhere from three minutes to like 30 minutes. So remember when I was talking about convenience and security and we right. optimize, maximize security at the cost of convenience? Well, you can see you need a strong, you need a strong computer and, and uh, you need to wait a while every time you start it. We're finally getting around to fixing that. Things like Satoshi Dice and just the general growth of the network has accelerated this problem much faster than I had expected. So now this has become a priority. The new version, for which there's a testing version out right now, uses only 200 to 300 megs of RAM. It, it, it uses probably 1 the amount of RAM, and it should be fairly constant. So you could even use it on a, quote, regular computer. And it saves all the data between loads so that it can start up you know, in less than a minute and frequently much faster than that. This is a huge improvement for, for Armory. It's just that at the moment, there's still some usability bugs in there that we have to, to get worked out with some crashes and a new data structure is corrupted or something like that. So we're working on getting that out, we hope, in the next couple of weeks. Of course, no one's going to believe me when I say in the next couple of weeks, because I've said that a lot of times. But... <laughs> just say soon. Just, just say yeah. it'll be out soon. <laughs> it'll be out soon. So once the RAM problem is dealt with, it, it sounds like, so, so why exactly has this been such a problem? Because I don't think it's a problem for many other wallet clients, is it? What are you doing differently that caused, turned this into a problem? Remember when I said this was really more of a hobbyist project? It wasn't even intended to be end user software when I started it. The way the engine was written was not meant to be scalable. And it worked great for the first year of actually being an end user product, but it just, it didn't have the scalability there. I was okay with it because the growth of the network didn't look like it was, it was that fast. I said, oh, okay, I'll have plenty of time to get all these great features developed, you know, and then I can upgrade that. The network grew so much faster than I had anticipated, and it really was not designed for that from the start. So it was, just a, it was just a decision that was made early on in the development process before I even knew that this was going to turn into a you know, widely used application and before I realized how fast the Bitcoin network was going to grow. So in the next couple of months, we're going to see the release of Bitcoin 0.9 or Bitcoin D.9, which is kind of a major release yes. that, among other things, incorporates a new payment protocol, essentially let uh, merchants make payment requests. And then instead of having a Bitcoin address show up, it'll actually reference a third party uh, who will send back a name. And so like if, if I have a payment that's going to me, instead of it going to one of my addresses, it would show up for the person paying me as just sent to Adam Levine or whatever my moniker is on there. Can you talk to me about what the significance is of this? And I mean, are there any things that you see wrong with it? Or is this really the right way to go? Well, I'll tell you, one of our, I, I've assigned one of our new guys to basically be the guy that deals with payment protocol. I'm only aware of, at a top level what it's doing so I can't speak too intelligently on it other than I am all for the gist of what it's doing. I mean, the, the idea of adding confidence to the payment process, being able, when someone sends you an email and says, send money to this address, you really don't have any confidence. I mean, you have confidence that it's right, but it's easy for an intelligent attacker to manipulate the system. And this really dramatically increases the amount of effort to, to manipulate the system, redivert funds. There's a lot of debate I don't want to call it controversy, but a lot of concern that it's being built on technologies like SSL. When you go to an HTTPS website, a secure website is built on the same thing, which hasn't had the best history, especially in recent light of all the NSA uh, activities, but it's really the best thing out there in terms of widespread use and adoption. And so we're just piggybacking on that to improve the confidence of money being moved around. One of the things I thought was interesting about it was that 
in the payment protocol, there are third parties that verify the address and name of the person, basically, which is what you're talking about. There are some uh, problems with like the certificate authority has been mm -hmm. accused of not being a tremendously effective system. One of the things I noticed about the way Bitcoin is implementing it is that just about anybody who has trust can become one of these certificate authorities. So, I mean, does that mean that like, Let's talk Bitcoin with our listeners and all this stuff could start issuing certificates to people based on, I mean, like, could we do that? Is, is, would that work in this system? Unfortunately, I can't talk too much about that. That's a little lower level than I know. But what I will tell you is that it's intended to, to basically piggyback on the existing certificate authority system so that any certificate authority, whenever you go to a secure website, HTTPS, and you don't get an error showing up there, it's because there's a certificate authority somewhere, uh, some company that has vouched for the identity of that website. And technically you should be able to do the exact same thing with a payment protocol is that merchants should be able to go and get essentially a signature from the same certificate authorities to vouch for their identity. However, I know that it was also designed to be extensible so that you can have other webs of trust used. I don't know that much about how easily they'll be used, but I know that I have brought up some of my own use cases for authenticating merchants, which we plan to do at some point. And uh, we were told that it is extensible for that. And that's w one of the reasons why I've got one of my guys looking at that now to figure out how to implement it and then um, how to extend it to do what we need it to do. So Armory will support payment protocol at some point in the future then? Yes. Well, the time always flies, Alan, but can you share with us the plans at Armory Technologies for the longer term development of your product? And I mean, are, is this going to be the only product that Armory Technologies develops or will there be others? So we definitely have plans for developing a mobile app, not just an app separated from everything else. I mean, we, we want to have kind of a, a continuous, continuous system where all your devices kind of are aware of each other. And we have some ideas for, for how to do that so that, you know, you can have your wallet on your phone and you can have a wallet on your computer and you can have perhaps a uh, multi-signature. You have accounts that are shared by you and your wife or shared between you and friends or board of directors of a company. Kind of thing this is all in the, the future but we see it as all part of armory armory itself is going to be simply expanding to, to absorb all these new use cases one of the big things we're working on is we're going to do the, the hardware wallet integration we want to be supporting those hardware wallets as soon as they come out i don't know if we'll be we'll make it in time but you know shortly afterwards we'll we'll have support for that and uh, you'll be able to go to the trezor website and, and get a trezor and it will work natively with armory longer term we plan to innovate the multi-signature transactions and we believe this is absolutely critical for bigger companies more wealthy parties to get involved because as it stands the only way to use bitcoin is with money that requires single signature to move and that's just too fragile for companies or individuals that uh, are holding very large sums of money they want separation of duties they want the increased security of, of having to require multiple pieces to come together to move money. And so far, it looks like Armory will be the one innovating that. We're already the company that produced the product that people trust for security. And that that's a very natural transition is to kind of innovate that aspect of things and give people access to this very valuable tool. Alan, if somebody wants to get involved with the project or download your software, what are the means to do that? Well, you can go to www.bitcoinarmory.com. Uh, in fact, we got a new website, so it looks snazzier. You can go to BitcoinArmory.com. The front of the page, there's a, a big orange button that says download now. It's available for Windows, Linux, and most of Mac. If you're on a Mac, uh, I can tell you that flip a coin, and if it comes up heads, it'll work flawlessly for you. And if not, you might have to wait. Yeah, I actually um, wanted to ask about that. I tried <laughs> to install it on our Mac yesterday, and I had mixed results. Is that something that you're going to be focused on in the next couple of months? I mean, like, is that yes. like... We actually have a couple of leads on how to, how to fix that issue. It, it's on the list. We have some resources devoted to it. So it definitely works on Windows and Linux, and it might work on your Mac. I'd say 50% of people report flawless, flawless functionality. The other 50% say they can't even start it. So <laughs> if you're lucky, you can use it on Mac. A new version should be out soon. So if you're on a system that doesn't have as much RAM, you can wait a little bit. We'll, we'll have a version for you soon. Have you finished your hiring since getting funded or are you still looking for any positions? Actually, no, we haven't finished the hiring. We have a pool of applicants. I guess I could use this opportunity to, to advertise <laughs> that we wouldn't mind some more applicants. 
who have a strong technical background and, and seriously committed to uh, solving fun problems. We, we think that there's a lot of fun problems to be solved here and get on the bleeding edge of this emerging new technology. And if that's the case, if anyone out there has superhero developer status and you're looking to change jobs, we'll be happy to entertain. And you can send your resume to support at bitcoinarmory.com or info at bitcoinarmory.com and uh, we'll get in touch with you. At the moment, we have about four or five people involved, but we're still looking for a couple more. Alan Reiner, founder and CEO of Armory Technologies. Once again, thanks very much for joining us and look forward to continuing to see your work. Thanks, Adam. Hi, Stephanie here. Would you like to turn your book into an enthralling audiobook? Need a persuasive commercial to promote your company? How about a narrator for your explainer video? Here's where I can help. I'm a freelance voiceover artist, and since 2009, I've lent my voice to dozens of audio projects. To hear some examples of my work, check out my website, smvoice.info. If you like what you hear, I'd love to be the voice of your next project. Get in touch at smvoice.info.